Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-62. Last time, the group switched out members with the cleric and mage returning topside and sending down the ranger and the waif to join the bard and gnome inside the dungeon complex below. With the tunnels being sealed, it appears that the group will have an easy time exploring the old ruins. We rejoin the quartet in the old cell block as a wide-eyed Karina moves her torch around the room. This is so awesome, uttered the waif in childlike wonderment. Bulger pointed out that the skeletal remains probably didn't think so, but a sharp glance from the bard caused him to quiet. The waif inquired if she had recovered anything interesting, and seemed puzzled that only the journal, wine, and lantern were recovered. Fargus chimed in, pointing out that Karina rechecked the body at the stairwell and found a silver dagger and a small gemstone. Cave and Bulger were taken aback at the young woman who proudly showed off her finds and blushed as she was congratulated by the older individuals. Bulger immediately gave her a backhanded comment about shoe sniffing and was quite surprised as she used both hands to push him into the wall. His face flushed in anger at the hasty response by the girl, but quickly changed as Fargus yelled, Look out! A large slimy snake fell from the ceiling and landed on Karina, who stood where Bulger was moments ago. The young woman was slammed to the floor by the giant constrictor snake and grabbed its lower jaw. The three males each fumbled for their weapons as they had been taken off guard. As Fargus unsheathed his weapon, he prepared for an overhead strike, but was blocked by Cabe, who feared the ranger would cut through the snake and smash Karina in the process. Bulger reacted by jumping onto the snake and grabbing its top jaw, tugging at it. Fargus realized his mistake and dropped his blade, followed by a lunge at the swirling monster. Blocked from entering melee by the large human, Cabe angled himself to get a better positioning against the foe. Karina and Bulger were clearly struggling against the pulsing serpent, and Fargus's punches were clearly not doing much damage. In a quick move that surprised all, the wife pulled forth the silver dagger and jabbed the serpent's lower jaw. The thin blade pierced through both jaws, nearly severing the pinky of the gnome, who fell off at the sudden appearance of the blade sticking out of the snake's head. Seeing his opportunity, Cabe Silvertongue launched himself at the serpent's head and raised a single short sword. The blade thrust through the back of the snake's head and made a grating noise as it crisscrossed itself with a silver dagger. The creature slumped over to one side as blood covered the young woman. The giant snake now lay motionless on the floor as everyone panted from the rush of excitement. Bulger struggled but was finally able to kick the dead snake off of him. Rising quickly, he began to sputter and spit, pointing at Karina, who was rising with the assistance of Cabe and Fargus. The gnome began to stammer and everyone looked at him puzzled, but then he took a deep breath and regained his composure. I... I thought you hit me. But you saved me. That thing would have swallowed me whole. Stunned at his reaction, the waif looked at the other two males before returning her gaze to the former sailor. You're welcome, she finally said. The gnome laughed deeply before grabbing the young woman and hoisting her off her feet. You don't understand, Missy. I do not like snakes. At all. Ever. I am in your debt. The group acknowledged his gratitude and pointed out that Karina's sharp eyes had saved the day. They cleaned off as best was possible and refocused on the exit door. Cabe listened but reporting nothing on the other side. The door was checked and opened rather easily, displaying another long hallway with an intersection halfway down. Finding new torches, Karina illuminated it and went to the back, but Fargus motioned her forward. Your turn to lead, young one. Shocked, the young woman looked at the others, who each nodded their approval. With her chest puffed up, 
She nodded and took the lead down the long hallway. Slowly leading the males forward, she came to an intersection. Checking each side, she moved up a bit for them to check the alternate routes more. The left and right passage were both choked with rock, timber, and other debris. Speaking to her party members, she advised them to check the passage and she would scout ahead. Nodding at approval, Fargus and Cabe each checked their own passage while Bulger brought up the rear making sure no additional snakes made an appearance. Finding nothing unusual, the men left the short halls and returned to the middle. Spotting Karina and the torch nearly 50 feet away, they called to her. As she turned to speak, the ground beneath everyone's feet began to shake and a portion of the intersection began to shower dust and dirt down the tunnel. Seeing the hallway beginning to collapse, the wave took off, running towards their associates, but the ceiling gave way, caving in, trapping the two groups on either side of the tunnel of rock. Plumes of dust rose up for several minutes, with Bulger, Fargus, and Cabe all beginning to yell but receiving no response from the other side. The ranger began to yell that he couldn't see, but the half-elven bard put his hand on the man's shoulder and calmed him down. Cabe advised that he would go get a torch for the man to remain still. A few moments later, light exploded from the cell chamber and the bard returned into the hall with a lit torch. With the illumination bathing the area in light, the situation looked grim. The rock collapse had covered the area floor to ceiling with no signs of the young waif. Bewildered, the men began to claw at the rocks to break through to the other side. A few minutes later, their hands bleeding, it was decided they needed more assistance. Cabe nodded his head and went back the way they had entered, while Fargus and Bulger began to move more and more stone. Surveying the burden remains in the lush Vale, Sister Elaine and Lady Irena continued their careful watch over the horizon to make sure no one was approaching. A dust-covered Cabe Silvertongue exited the opening, coughing and choking on the dust he had inhaled. The two females asked him if he had felt the earthquake, then noticed the grave look on his face. The pair peppered the bard with questions and decided to change tactics after finding out that Karina was trapped or possibly dead. The trio pulled forth their adventurer's tent and set it up. Bringing the horses into the tent, they tied all of them together and set peepers at the entrance as a guard. The small group quickly re-entered the dungeon and hastily made their way back to the site of the cave-in. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.